We are in the middle of winter here in Tennessee, and we finally got to experience our very first snowfall on the farm since moving up here. It was a pretty big storm and pretty much covered the entire state. We were very fortunate that we planned ahead and we made sure that we had enough supplies to last us as long as possible, especially since the kids were home from school for about a week and a half. It was definitely nice to experience this beautiful weather and everything just looked so majestic outdoors. And of course, the kids enjoyed their time off. <laughs> Come rain or shine or snow, it is always busy inside the house while I prepare meals and make sure to take care of everybody on a day-to-day -day basis. I cannot express how happy I am and relieved that I can finally have a kitchen that I can use that's not only functional and much larger than a camper kitchen, but is also beautiful and just so cozy. And as y'all know, I love making beautiful and comfortable spaces in my home but none of that is worth it if i am not in them using them every single day and just enjoying every little bit about them whether it is just looking at them and appreciating them or actually working in them like i am today and since the weather is so chilly outside, I thought this would be the perfect occasion to share with you all one of my favorite dishes. For this, I'll be using my Dutch oven. And if you have a Dutch oven and you don't have any of these little protectors for your rim, these are a game changer. I recently came across these and I decided to try them out. And they are a lifesaver whenever you need to stack your pots inside of cabinet for limited space like I have and these really help protect those lips from chipping and just grinding against each other when they're in storage. Now what we are making today is a butternut squash and pork sausage chili. Hear me out. It is savory and sweet and it has a little bit of heat because of the pork sausage and let me tell you something, it is the perfect way to warm yourself up on a cold winter's day. Now, if you don't do pork sausage, you can always switch this out for beef, deer meat, or even ground turkey. However, you will need additional seasonings because this pork, which we got from a local butcher, actually has a lot of flavor and seasonings in them already. So I don't need to add too many condiments to this soup because this meat has just great flavor. This is a pound of pork sausage and mine is actually a little bit frozen still so I have it on low heat so that it, it can slowly defrost the entire meat and not overcook the pieces that have already um, come off of it. So that's what I'm doing there. While that's cooking, I am going to be cutting up a medium onion. You're going to need the basics for this chili. You're going to need this onion diced into small pieces. If there was one thing I learned from the Rachel Ray show, actually it was two. It was how to chop an onion as well as always have a bowl for your trash on your counter. <laughs> and that's what you see me using there. I think it was 30 minute meals that show that she used to do. Now, I never really actually thought any of her recipes were appetizing, to be quite honest. <laughs> her show just seemed a little bit chaotic for me. But at least I got these two very important things from that show that honestly I have used till this day. Ain't that funny? Now, one of the really truly inspiring shows that I used to love to watch and I made several recipes was Barefoot Contessa. There was something about that show that was really calming to me and 
just the way that she poured her heart and soul into making wonderful meals for her husband and herself to enjoy when he got home from work. I just always loved that about her and everything was so refined and so just beautifully made in her kitchen and while I am no barefoot contessa here I hope you get a little bit of inspiration from this video as well and just enjoy making a beautiful meal or getting inspired to make one today. I do think that this is just the perfect time during winter to really get in the kitchen and really experiment and enjoy this time indoors while everything else is cold outdoors and just providing wonderful homemade meals for your family. Now, as you can see here, I am taking apart several garlic cloves and to me, you can't have too much garlic. <laughs> in any meal. And I think I have about, I don't know, six or seven of them, maybe eight. I'm not sure. I, I don't remember. But I'm here just, you know, peeling them off. And eventually I will be mincing this with my garlic mincer. So I just like to run them through and then I'll just set them aside until I need them for the meal. And I don't know about you, but I've always preferred mincing my own garlic rather than buying minced garlic because I never find that the stuff in the jars tastes the same. Is that just me or do you think also that it just changes the flavor of it? Next, I am going to be peeling and cutting four carrots. I absolutely love carrots and I'm looking forward to finally starting to grow them. <laughs> in a garden this year. So hopefully that will happen this spring. Now after I peeled the carrots, I just chopped them up into little coins. Next, I have washed and am now cutting four celery stalks. And I am just going to be cutting them down again about the same size as the carrots. And I also like to cut up some of the leaves. I do think they add quite a bit of flavor to any soup or chili that you may be using them in. Isn't that such a pretty white bowl? My parents bought me a set of bowls before we moved up here and I am just enjoying using them in the kitchen. Now the pork sausage is completely cooked through and no I'm not removing any of that amazing fat so all I'm doing is adding the onions and just mixing it all around and then I'm going to be including the garlic as well and I'm just going to let it cook for about four or five minutes like this to let the onions sort of render down a little bit. So then after that I will be adding the celery as well as the carrots and then I'll just stir everything around and then just let them cook again about medium heat in order for them to just start getting nice and tender. Now while that's on the stove, I'm going to be uh, cutting up the star of the show which is this amazing butternut squash and this is a pretty big one. Um, I love butternut squash. You may even be able to substitute this for pumpkin if you love pumpkin, because I love pumpkin too. <laughs> so you can definitely use both. The sweetness of this gives this chili an amazing flavor. And I don't know about you, but I've always had trouble peeling and cutting these things. They are, not only are they hard to cut because they're just so solid, but then they're like really slippery when you're trying to hold them in order to peel off their skin and you know I just have to go through a couple of times making sure I get all of that rind off and just make sure I only have that really deep butternut squash flesh showing and then I'm just gonna chop it up into small bite-sized pieces. I 
I always feel like I look really awkward chopping stuff up. Like, I could probably do better. <laughs> Now, I don't know this, but maybe one of you does. Can you roast butternut squash seeds like you can pumpkin seeds? I'm kind of curious. I don't think I've ever seen anyone eat butternut squash seeds, but I might be wrong. And of course, you want to remove all of the seeds as well as the fibrous pieces before you chop this section up. All right, so you're going to want to set these aside and you're going to get your next ingredient, which is a can of great northern beans. Now I'm going to open this up. I'm going to empty out all of the liquid and I am going to rinse them out before adding them to the pot of chili. At this point, your meat and veggies should look like this. And I just added a teaspoon of thyme to them and then just stirred them around. Next, I'm adding the beans, and then I'm also going to be adding the butternut squash. Now, for this next part, you can use chicken stock if you wish. What I usually do, honestly, is I will add six cups of water, and then I'll include a cube of chicken bouillon. I'll give this a good stir and then I'll just close the lid, leave it on low to medium heat to kind of simmer for about 15-20 minutes. Of course, this is the perfect time to go to my shed and do some laundry. <laughs> and this is a picture of what it looked like when it was nice and snowed in. Of course, after the snow melted, all we got was rain, rain, rain. And this is what our front yard looks like, just in front of our steps. Luckily, we had a neighbor stop by <laughs> and give us a third of one of his hay bales so that we can spread it all over the ground so that we wouldn't fall into the mud pit every time we needed to either go to our car or I needed to go do some laundry. These are just some of the things that we have gotten to experience since moving up here. You know, things that we've never, ever had to deal with before. And it's all kind of a learning experience. Of course, we don't have a driveway or a sidewalk coming up to our cottage. So that's why this is going on. And since we do have pasture land, it's very fertile, very nice land. <laughs> It just gets very, very muddy when it rains. So this actually helped a little bit. As you heard, even though it's not currently raining, the floor is extremely saturated. And I always am very cautious when I come back with the clean laundry because I don't want any of it blowing off and falling into, oh, that muddy ground. All right, so back to the chili. It should be looking like this right about now. And again, I have it just under medium heat for this because I don't want it boiling over. I'm going to give it a good stir. And at this point, I like to add salt and pepper to taste. Of course, that's completely up to you how much or how little you want. But I do like it nice and flavorful. Again, I don't add any spices or herbs or anything like this because that sausage that we have is so full of flavor. And it even has a little bit of heat to it. So not only are you getting like the sweetness from the butternut squash, but you're also getting a little bit of spice in it. And yes, I am using a spatula to stir my chili. I find that it helps scrape the bottom of the pan a lot better 
than a round spoon. All right, after this, I am going to add about three quarters of a cup of half and half, and I'm going to give it a good stir. And then uh, finally, the last ingredient is I like to add some spinach to this. And I'll add about four handfuls here. And what I usually do is I usually get like the spinach that you buy for a salad. And we never end up eating it, or at least we never get to eat all of it before it goes bad. So before it does, what I like to do is I like to freeze that bag of spinach that we get and I'll just have it in the freezer and whenever I need some, I'll just pull it out like this and I'll just throw it into anything. So I always do that with my, you know, spinach for salad just to make sure I don't, you know, lose any of it. At this point, I just leave it to simmer for about another 10 minutes or so. And honestly, it's just done at this point. But of course, you can't have any chili without something to go with it. So I'm setting my oven to 425 and we are going to make some homemade buttermilk biscuits. First thing you want to do is grab yourself a large bowl and we are going to add some flour. I like to use unbleached all-purpose flour for this and we're going to need two cups. We're also going to add half a teaspoon of baking soda, half a teaspoon of salt, we're also going to add one tablespoon of sugar and one tablespoon of baking powder. I'm going to take a whisk and make sure that everything is nice and combined. And then we're going to add one cup of cold buttermilk. Now you can always use the substitute if you don't have any buttermilk and you can do the milk and vinegar combination. I will say it doesn't taste as good. It works, but it's just not as good. And then we are going to grate seven tablespoons of cold salted butter. Make sure it's salted. It will make a difference. Now, if you also want to get really fancy with this, you can do three tablespoons of salted butter and four tablespoons of buttered flavored vegetable shortening. That will take it to the next level. I have done both. They are both great. And if I don't have any vegetable shortening that tastes like butter, I will use just butter and it works just fine. But if you ever want to get a little fancy and really go out there, definitely try that combination. I'm sure you're going to love it. And if you have any questions about these recipes that I shared with you today, I will have them linked in the description box below so you can refer to them and make sure you get the entire ingredient list. Now, before I began to knead this, I remembered that I didn't have my baking sheet and my parchment paper, so that's what I was doing in the back. You're going to want a nice floured surface so that your mixture does not stick and what you're going to want to do is just try to combine it as best you can you don't want to overwork it and you don't want to over knead it so you just place it onto your cutting board or your counter and the dough is going to be a little sticky so what i like to use is a dough scraper to kind of fold it onto itself as you see me doing right here i'm just taking any loose dough that's on the board and I'm just picking it up and just kind of squeezing it into the dough. Then I begin to flatten it out with my hands and I don't use a rolling pin. You can certainly do so if you want to, but hey, what's the point of getting something else dirty in the kitchen when you can just use your hands? When it's this consistency, it doesn't have to be completely incorporated. It's totally fine. Flaky biscuits are awesome. I began to press it down with my fingers as you see here. And you can either do about half inch or a three quarter inch thickness. I think that's kind of what I have here or a combination. <laughs> they don't have to be perfect. I just get my little biscuit cutter and I began to cut the biscuits out. Now, once you go through all of the dough and cut throughout it, just combine the dough again and recut into it. 
this recipe should yield you 10 biscuits. Of course, that last biscuit ain't going to look the prettiest because we're pretty much going to fold it by hand. Now, you don't have to use parchment paper. You can put it right directly on your baking sheet if you wish. I just think it helps with, you know, cleanup in the long run. You're going to put these in the oven for about 8 to 10 minutes, depending on how golden you want them. They are done very quickly. Now, this is the perfect time for me to tidy up my kitchen, wipe things down, put things in the dishwasher as these are getting cooked. And just like that, you have some amazing homemade buttermilk biscuits. These biscuits are perfect. They have that buttery flavor. They're nice and soft and flaky. And because we use that salted butter, they have that hint of saltiness to them that is just perfect. Watch out, Chick-fil-A. These are amazing, I'm just saying. Of course, we can't forget that beautiful chili on the stove. It's looking so amazing at this point, and I'll just scoop up a little bit so you guys can see what it looks like. I promise you, not only is this super healthy because you've got all these amazing vegetables in there, but you will love the flavor combination, the sweet and savory and a little bit of heat from the sausage. And just the combination of this with the biscuit is just perfect for any winter and, of course, fall meal where it gets chilly at night or it's chilly all day long like it has been up here in Tennessee. So I hope you enjoyed following along today on this different and chatty video. I hope you were inspired to perhaps try something new and just kind of see a little bit more behind the scenes of what it's like living up here and what we get to experience. Thank you all so much for watching this week's video. If you all enjoyed it, please make sure to give this video a thumbs up and let me know if you're going to try one of these recipes. I will have both of these recipes linked in the description box below. I hope you all are doing well and I will see you all in the next video. Until then, adios!